Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Welcome to the fourth video in my series, Languages for Islamic Studies Reading Lists. The language we will deal with today is Urdu. Prior to this, we dealt with Arabic, Persian, and Turkish, Ottoman, and other forms. This is a little bit different for me because Urdu is a language which I learned growing up as a child. It's my mother tongue along with English, which so I grew up bilingual. So I didn't really have to start from zero in learning this language. So I had to um, rely in this case on uh, advice from um, some of my students. And so the books which I'm going to mention, I have not used for the obvious reason that I grew up speaking this language as a child. When I did finally, you know, grow up and become an adult, I did uh, undergo a kind of study of the Urdu language at a more maybe high intermediate or advanced level. And I did that through a book which was written in English, which I will also mention in this video, uh, because I want to give you a full kind of a picture of what would be involved. Unfortunately, there are not as many resources for uh, learning Urdu in comparison with, let's say, Arabic uh, or Persian or maybe Turkish is about the same. I'm, uh, I'm not sure. But there are a, um, some good ones which you can refer to. And unfortunately, I don't have, well, I have a copy, but I can't, I don't have my copy handy. I've given it or lent it to someone. But the introductory book to start with is called Let's Study Urdu, an Introductory Course. Um, this book is by uh, Ali Asani and Sayyid Akbar Haider. Uh, I don't know Ali Asani. I've never met him. I think he may still be at Harvard. Sayyid Akbar Haider um, has become quite a big name in the teaching of Urdu, uh, at least in the United States of America. And he is the head of something called the Urdu flagship at the University of Texas at Austin, which seems to be the place for uh, Urdu studies in America now, and they have a lot of resources. So if you are starting out as a beginner in Urdu, or even if you are what is called a heritage speaker, you still may be starting at a very um, basic level. You might be able to speak, but you may not have a good understanding, maybe necessarily of all of the um, grammatical structures, maybe the written version of the language. So an excellent uh, place for web resources is the Urdu flagship. Um, I really don't know what the URL is. Maybe I could look it up later and put it in the comments. But if you're just watching this video and you, you can just search it right now, the Urdu flagship at the University of Texas at Austin. So the first book there, which I mentioned again, is Let's Study Urdu, an introductory course by Ali Asani and Sayyid Akbar Haider. That is a Yale University Press, and that's 2008. I actually have a PDF here. But I don't have the uh, the hard uh, the hard copy handy at the moment. Now there are some other um, books. My guess is this is probably not a, a very um, affordable book. It's a what, six five six hundred pages. Uh, it's probably going to be expensive. But there are other cheaper resources. So there is, for example, the um, Teach Yourself Urdu. You can probably find, uh, you know, a PDF of that. It's also, you know, the teacher self books usually are um, not that expensive and they can also be often be found in um, used versions. Ah, yeah, this is kind of funny. This is one of my students uh, actually gave me a PDF of this book. Um, if you can actually um, get, get to the point where you learn the script and you can read Urdu, then um, this book has a lot of excellent Urdu dialogues and texts in it, but uh, they're not translated, but it's in Russian. I don't know Russian, uh, but this is a very uh, fantastic book. You can find a PDF of it. It's called Praktichesky Uchebnik Urdu, if I've pronounced it correctly. I might even put up a PDF of this in a Google Drive or something, and you can download it. I think that you know, the Soviet Union is long gone now, and I don't think that Lenin and Stalin and Leonid Brezhnev and all those chaps will come after us if we, if we upload this. Um, you will need a grammar, a reference grammar, and in this we are very fortunate. Now, again, this is not a, a very uh, affordable book. It's published by Routledge. These, these Routledge books are usually expensive, just like the grammar I mentioned for Turkish. 
Um, this is um, the same publisher. It's called Urdu and Essential Grammar. So they have a whole series like Urdu Essential Grammar, Turkish Essential Grammar, Persian Essential Grammar. And this one is by Ruth Leila Schmidt, but it's really quite, uh, quite good. I found it to be uh, very useful as a reference grammar for Urdu. If you're really serious about learning Urdu, again, as I said, these, these videos, these reading lists are not for tourists, uh, you know, who are just going and want to get a basic understanding. The best thing for that, of course, is the Lonely Planet Guides. You will need uh, some dictionaries. Now, to really learn proper Urdu, especially if you want to use it for Islamic studies, um, it's very good if you already know or have a serious exposure to Arabic and Persian, because there is a heavy Arabic and Persian element, especially in educated pre-modern Urdu. And so you need some good dictionaries. And the best sort of dictionary for this, this kind of version of the language is um, it's a very old dictionary. I think it was originally published around 1884, and it's been reprinted many, many times. It's the Dictionary of Urdu, Classical Hindi, and English by Jonathan T. Platts. If you are at some point in your Urdu studies in India or Pakistan, or you can get in touch with people there, you can get it rather cheaply. So I have uh, an Indian uh, reprint of this. This is very, very useful. And it is both in the Urdu script as well as the Devanagari script used for Hindi. I will say a few words about Hindi very shortly. Uh, the dictionary, which I already mentioned for Persian, the Persian English Dictionary by Steingas. This is very useful for Urdu as well because of the heavy Persian element. So I do recommend keeping one of those around as well. If you ever get to the point where your Urdu is good enough that you can use an Urdu Urdu dictionary, then the best dictionary is in, um, what, 17 volume, 14 or 15, maybe 17 volumes, I'm not sure. It's called Muhazzab al lughat by Muhazzab Laknavi. This is volume one, published in Lucknow. Um, and it's very, very useful. If you get to an advanced level, I said that I used a kind of reader for advanced Urdu. That is Urdu Readings in Literary Urdu Prose by Gopi Chand Narang. This book, I actually have a, an Indian edition, uh, but you may be able to find it in the U.S. as well as a used book. Um, this was published at the, republished in India by the National Council for the Promotion of the Urdu Language. Um, I think originally it was published a long time ago, it was in 1967, by the University of Wisconsin-Madison. It has excellent uh, readings, the script is very nice, It's um, and then on the other side you have vocab and grammatical notes, and it's really an excellent um, reader to transition into advanced, inter high intermediate and advanced levels of Urdu. All right, so many people might wonder, what about Hindi, you know, Urdu, Hindi, are they the same language? I could probably do a whole video on that. Uh, the short answer is, they're really not different languages. Urdu and Hindi are really the same language. Where they differ is in writing system. Urdu is written in a writing system based on Arabic and Persian, you know, additional letters which are found in Persian, and then its own additional letters for um, sounds which are very characteristic of Indic language languages, retroflex sounds like da and ra and da and things of that nature. So there's a difference in the writing system, and the other difference is in the lexicon, the language, or sorry, the, the, the words used in the language. Whenever speakers of Urdu or Hindi are speaking or writing in a higher, more formal register, uh, in the case of Urdu, the lexicon, the words will be taken from Arabic and Persian, and in the case of Hindi, they will be taken from Sanskrit. So they really are the same language. The structure, the grammar, the way the verbs um, work out and are conjugated, they're the same. You know, even the pronouns, uh, they're exactly the same. You, you don't even have that in, in very closely related languages like Russian and Ukrainian, to the best of my knowledge. So what do you do? Well, since I'm, I'm, you know, tailoring this for students in Islamic studies, you will already probably know if you come to Urdu, having studied Arabic and Persian, you'll be very comfortable already with the Arabic script. So the thing you need to do is get the Hindi script down. Really, the cheapest and best way to go is this book called The Beginner's Hindi Script from the Teach Yourself series. It's very useful and it initiates you into the Devanagari script. Uh, then in terms of the, a beginner's level of Hindi, 
This is a very old book by R.S. McGregor called The Outline of Hindi Grammar, but it's a beginner's book. If you see, oh, grammar, it's going to be an advanced book. It's not. It starts from sort of the bottom and, 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 and works through. Again, um, I have an Indian edition of this, which and those are very affordable, especially if you go from America with U.S. dollars. It might be expensive if you find, buy it in, in, the, in, the, in the United States or in the U.K. And so, again, the teach yourself books are always a great, great fallback. You know, they're, they're relatively inexpensive so there's beginners hindi and as i said the dictionary of plats has the words the entry is written in both the urdu script and the devanagari script um simpler dictionaries for urdu and hindi i actually don't use because i don't need them um but they are easily available oxford puts out you know i'm sure there's a hindi hindi english oxford and similar ones for urdu the the, the simpler ones are not a problem you know the basic dictionaries to to get but if you want to go to a higher level thing you have to use plats plus persian or maybe even sometimes you might even have to refer to an arabic dictionary that's just the situation that's just the way things are in the language another you know aspect of language learning especially in the modern age it's as in contemporary periods it's very um, different now a lot of resources are available which weren't available when i started out you can you can go on youtube there's different um websites where you can find you know people that you who are native speakers that can tutor you um and in the case of of urdu slash hindi there's a lot of bollywood movies that have um 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 uh, subtitles and you know a lot of stuff on netflix you could watch and the same goes for pakistani dramas <clears throat> so um, at least that would get you into the language there is um one final remark which i would like to make which applies to both urdu and hindi especially in its spoken forms these languages unfortunately are in my view very much on the decline in as much as the level of of um of speech or writing that you find in the languages because many many people who are speakers of urdu and hindi are not able to express themselves without the use of english words it's a very strange thing uh, but this is the situation and the reason for this is is because many of them the first language which they learn or they're educated in they may be speaking some version of urdu or hindi at home but at school it's english and in India and Pakistan both, the prestige language of the upper classes is English. And after they attain to a certain level of maturity and mental sophistication and their mind is uh, growing, what are they exposed to? English novels, English magazines, English shows, English websites, English, English, English. And so there is a decline. And the fact is that the really great masters of Urdu in the pre-modern period, what did they first learn? They were exposed at an early age to the study of Arabic and Persian. And that's why their Urdu was so good. It's just like in the Western civilization, the, you know, the key languages for Western civilization, Western heritage, Western intellectual, literary, artistic heritage are Greek and Latin. In the Islamic world, fundamental languages are Arabic and Persian. And this applied even in the Ottoman world. You know, if you were a, uh, wanted to be an educated person in the Ottoman Empire, you learned Arabic and Persian, and you really had to have some understanding of those languages to write educated Ottoman. The same is true of, of Urdu. So... If you really want to learn Urdu well, you have to have a serious exposure to Arabic and Persian. And if you don't, you'll end up like many of the modern heirs of this language um, who are considerably handicapped and constantly have recourse to English words. Thank you for watching.